This floor was another fun challenge. It's a variation on flake application to epoxy and polyaspartic top coat by applying two layers of flake, but with the intent that it's gonna be ground down and left smooth and then top coated with some kind of wear layer, whether it be a urethane or in this case, a polyaspartic. To begin the process, diamond grinding was done to remove any topical materials and reduce any elevation inequalities to flatten the floor. Once this was complete and the bulk dust was removed by vacuum wand, it was then shop blasted. The shop blasting was done to remove any of the excess dust that the vacuum wand could not remove from the surface. And as it shows, it gets the floor about as clean as it's gonna get. Once the shop blasting was complete, a primer coat was applied by Squeegee, but being that this floor has so many holes in it and the surface porosity that's inherent to this slab, 10 mils of material was applied to the surface. This floor having the surface porosity that it does, the goal was to fill those in the best they could be, as well as leave enough material on top to do a light broadcast of flake into that wet epoxy. Only enough flake was thrown to cover the surface. It wasn't thrown to saturation, just enough to cover it, and as it shows in the video, there were some shiny spots left. So the main point here was to drop in enough flake just to cover it, but not have so much that it would have to later be vacuumed. Once the surface was allowed to cure overnight, another 10 mils of epoxy was applied to the floor. Into this wet epoxy was thrown another layer of flake, but in this case it was thrown to saturation or rejection. It was fully loaded with flake until no bare spots remained. After this layer had cured overnight, a vacuum wand was used to remove the excess flake. The floor was intentionally not scraped. The aim here is to have any of the flake that's still attached but perhaps at different angles to remain so that when the final floor was ground, it would give a different effect than if the floor had been scraped and was left more smooth. Once the vacuuming was complete, 20 mils of 100% solids epoxy was poured over the floor as a grout and seal coat. The idea is to lock that flake down as a grout coat, but also to leave an extra amount of material on top for when the grinding takes place so that the grinding has something to grind through and down into those valleys. In other words, enough body to the surface of that floor that it could withstand the grinding without the grinder going through that layer. The floor was then ground with an 80 grit diamond on a rotary grinder. The grinding went well enough, except some of the scratches that were left behind were a little more severe than what a 3 to 5 mil urethane might hide. For that reason, a square sander with a 100 grit screen was used to smooth the floor.
the scratches from this machine are much less. So if a thinner top coat of three to five mil urethane, as an example, were to be used, the profile of the floor wouldn't telegraph through that top layer. For the purpose of testing the concept of using a polyaspartic as a top coat, 16 mils of polyaspartic was applied to the surface by squeegee and then back rolling. Once this is done, then it's just a matter of curing before it can receive traffic. Of course, this floor is not going to have the conventional look of a flake floor because it's not going to have a profile that's normally inherent with a flake. It is going to be very smooth. For that reason, it may be slippery if it's used in the wrong applications. The effect given is a little more dramatic than a basic flake, which has more inequalities as far as ups and downs or high and low spots where the flake sits higher or lower on the floor. The idea of being able to see the flake as though it were encapsulated in the floor, but not at the surface, was achieved. The next attempt will have different color flakes to be a little more dramatic in its appearance, but the process should remain relatively the same. The whole goal is to encapsulate that flake inside it without it actually residing at the surface. Though some are at the surface and have been ground, as those peaks have been ground into the lower spots that are normally in a flake floor, beyond that, it's possible to actually see that flake submerged or encapsulated inside that epoxy just below the surface of the floor. I hope the video was informative. If you like what you watch, please drop a like. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please drop those below as well. Thanks very much for watching and have a great day.